Okay, let's look at uh, this problem, uh, best estimator. So this comes up in uh, lots of situations. Generally, you, have give, you are given some data and there is some unknown. Of course, we want to estimate the unknown in terms of the data. So I'll take a simple problem. I'm just going to assume that we have, uh, uh, generally there will be multiple data sets and so on. Uh, but right now we are going to assume that uh, about x, a specific value, small x or x naught is known. That's the data observation that's given. And y is unknown. And we want to estimate the y. So y hat is an estimator uh, for y uh, based on the data. Um, so of course it will be a function of x, y hat will be a function of x. And uh, in general we can look at uh, linear estimator and nonlinear estimator. So linear in this case, y hat will be, of course, simply ax. And here y hat will be the sum function of x. And if you can find out this function, then we, whatever is the observation, we plug it in here. So then the question is, what do we mean by best? So of course, the idea is that if you have an estimator, this should be hopefully very close to the unknown that we are looking for. Or the difference between the estimator and the unknown will be the error. How poor or so error epsilon is y minus y hat. So in, in the linear case, it will be y minus ax, etc. So one criteria could be that a uh, sensible thing would be to minimize the error or since the error could be positive or negative, you minimize the mean squared error. And that's what, at least for right now, we mean by best. Uh, so uh, the criteria for best is defined as a minimization of mean squared error. Uh, so this is also known as uh, uh, MMSC criterion. Uh, so in the <coughs> in the linear case, uh, of course, the error is uh, error is y minus y hat. Uh, so the, you square the error and then take the mean value. Uh, so that will be epsilon squared expected value. Uh, so this will be expected value of y minus y hat squared. So this is the mean square error and minimization. A minimization, whether depending on the linear case or nonlinear case, it will be either on a or the phi function, right? Uh, so here also we minimize either a or phi. So this is what we mean by best. So now we can do it both the linear case and the nonlinear case. Uh, so in the linear case, uh, minimization with respect to A for epsilon squared. So epsilon is, of course, in the linear case, epsilon is so y minus y hat. But y hat is a, ax. So here the uh, minimiz <coughs> so minimization is the same as, since the unknown is A, we can take the derivative with respect to A to minimize. So the derivative, once it goes inside the expectation, it is simply a DA. So this is two epsilon. So equate the uh, derivative to zero. So the derivative turns out to be two epsilon d epsilon by da expected value. This should be zero. But d, we can do it here. Epsilon is here. So d epsilon by da would be from here minus x. 
So if I substitute it here, this gives minus 2 expected value of epsilon multiplied by x should be 0. Or we get, this is the criterion for minus 2 is a constant and uh, epsilon multiplied by x should be 0. So this is the definition for two random variables to be orthogonal. Uh, so we come up with a fundamental principle in linear estimation. So remember the question is how do you select the A? A is embedded in the error. So what it says is that the A, the unknown constant should be selected such that the error is orthogonal to data. So in linear estimation, uh, so the best linear estimator is uh, says the error is orthogonal to data, which is the same as expected value of, uh, which is one and the same as epsilon x should be zero. So this is error, uh, this is the data set. So now finally if you substitute for the, so epsilon x, but epsilon, epsilon is y minus uh, ax, multiplied by x should be 0. So this gives us expected value of xy minus a, expected value of x squared is 0. So we can solve for a. So the optimum a is expected value of xy over expected value of x squared. And uh, so that's the best, esti best linear estimator, that's the a uh, that's this A. So that's going to be a number. So of course you can see that if, uh, uh, and then now we can also use this A to find out the minimum value of uh, uh, the error. So this is going to be epsilon squared, but epsilon, this is epsilon multiplied by y minus ax. But this can be written as epsilon y minus a epsilon x. But if a is the best value, at the minimum value we substitute this a. But if we use this a, then this error is orthogonal to data. So this term will be 0. So the minimum error turns out to be epsilon y. Once again, if you substitute for epsilon, which is y minus ax, multiplied by y. So this turns out to be expected value of y squared minus a expected value of x y. And finally we can plug in the a there. So this turns out to be expected value of y squared minus expected value of x y the whole squared over epsilon y squared, x squared. Or we could also write this as expected value of x squared multiplied by expected value of y squared minus expected value of x y the whole squared over expected value of x squared. Now from Schwartz inequality we know that the numerator is non-negative as it should be. So the minimum error is going to be non-negative. So the only two things to do is this is the best, best optimum or the A optimum in the linear case. And this is the minimum mean squared error, residual minimum mean squared error. So the best linear estimator is going to be A optimum multiplied by X. So whatever is the data, you substitute there. And A optimum is a number from here. And if you use this estimator, this is the error that we end up with. So now we can look at the best nonlinear estimator or best estimator without any restrictions. So there we use y hat to be some function of x. The whole point is we are not prejudicing ourselves to be linear or quadratic at this point. 
But once again, the criterion is going to be the same thing. Minimize the uh, mean squared error over phi, where error is, of course, y minus y hat, y minus phi x. So if you, if you look at the, if you want to minimize this, so we, this would be epsilon value of epsilon squared. So this, of course, we can write it as, there are two random variables, y and x. So this is, epsilon is, of course, y minus phi x, uh, the whole square, f x y, x comma y, uh, y dx. So of course, the minimization is over the function phi. Now because this, uh, because at this point, this is a random variable, because x is a random variable, we could, uh, uh, we could uh, look at the degree of difficulty here using the conditional density function of y given x because if you condition it on x, this becomes a, uh, it ceases to be a random variable. So we can rewrite this as uh, the same expression for the error, but uh, this joint density function in any case can be written as in this manner. So inside integration on y, outside integration is on x. But notice that at this point x is given, consequently this is no longer random. And so this minimization of course now comes over inside because this is, uh, so we had integral over x, minimization over the phi. And to do this minimization, what, let's say this function I'm going to call capital A which is a function of phi, I can uh, do the, the derivative of that function with respect to uh, phi. So that we can do here. So if you do that, this becomes two, uh, and this is the error multiplied by minus one. So this condition turns out to be y minus phi x multiplied by f of y given x y given x dy should be equal to zero. And here you have minus two. Two from here and minus from here. But this minus two is irrelevant to the condition. So we get an equation with uh, two sides. The integration is on y. So if I put uh, the, remember this is a given x. So uh, as far as this integration is concerned, so once we expand, we get uh, integral y f y given x dy equals integral phi x integral f y given x y given x dy. But this phi x, because the integration is on y, this goes outside. But then what remains is, so we can bring this integral here. But this is the area under a density function, so that's one. So we get the answer for phi x. And if you look here, this is the conditional mean of the unknown given x. So I can write this as expected value of y given x equal to x. So we have the answer. The optimum, the best estimator is going to be the conditional mean of y given x. So this is the best nonlinear estimator. And uh, this is going to be, that's a special case of this. Finally, if you substitute this into the minimum mean squared error expression here, so if you substitute this here, notice that this is the, condi uh, this is the conditional mean of y. So this becomes the conditional variance. Uh, so you can also write the minimum mean squared error in this case to be integral. So you have double integral y minus expected value of y given x for the whole square of y given x dy. But this quantity is the conditional variance of y given x. And then finally integrate out fxx. 
So we could write this as the expected value with respect to x for the conditional variance of y given uh, x. That's the minimum value of the mean squared error compared to the minimum value of the mean squared error here. So as uh, to summarize, uh, once we have some data and if y is the unknown, trying to estimate the unknown using the data, you have uh, two cases, linear and nonlinear. Uh, by best, of course, we mean here MMSE estimator, minimum mean squared error estimator. So in the linear case, y hat is a linear function of the data. Then the only question is, what is this constant? So we just showed earlier that the constant is expected value of x, y over x squared. And so if x and y are zero mean, this is going to be the variance, and this is the covariance of x and y. And of course, if x and covariance are the co so this is this is the correlation coefficient multiplied by the standard deviations of x and y. So if the correlation is zero, a will be zero, which makes sense. If, y, if x and y are uncorrelated, there is no information in x uh, to update to y. And the uh, same thing here. If uh, in this case, the uh, best nonlinear estimator is, of course, the conditional mean of the unknown given the data. Remember, this is the data. Uh, this is the unknown. So estimator will be a function of the data. Again, if x and y are independent, this is not going to, the data is useless because the conditional mean is the same as the unconditional mean. Again, that makes sense because if something is independent of y, that quantity is not going to give any information on y. So let's do an example. Let's say joint density function of x comma y is, uh, I believe this is a density function. Uh, so this is, looks like exponential, but the density function is only valid when x is greater than y. And both the random variables are uh, positive. Uh, so this density function is valid here. Everywhere else, the density function is 0. Uh, so finding the linear estimation, of course, you need to find out the fxx. And uh, so, for example, fxx would be, in this case, the, the joint density function of x comma y integrated out on y. But for any x, uh, y need to be integrated. So this is the equation of the line x equal to y. So y goes from 0 to x. And so the joint density function is 0 to x e raised to minus x plus y dy. So this is the same as 2 e raised to minus x, 0 to x, e raised to minus y, dy. 2 e raised to minus x, e raised to minus y over minus 1, 0 to y. So this is 2 e raised to minus x multiplied by 1 minus e raised to x. Uh, so this is 2 e raised to minus x minus e raised to minus 2x. For x positive, that's the uh, density function of x. So we can use to find the expected value of x squared. And since the joint density function is given, we can compute the expected value of xy, which is double integral fxy xy fxy x comma y dy dx let's say and uh, so the limits in this case are y goes again y goes from 0 to x x goes from 0 to infinity so this is 0 to infinity y goes from 0 to x xy e raised to minus x plus y dy dx so we just need to integrate this and you'll get a number. Similarly, expected value of x squared 
is integral 0 to infinity x squared fxx dx. So again, we need to plug this in and uh, integrate it out. So it's a matter of integration. So you get uh, number. So the ratio will give us uh, A. It will be the ratio of these two. So whereas in the nonlinear case, we need, uh, so the best nonlinear estimator is expected value of y given x. So that's going to be y conditional density function of y given x dy. So we need the conditional density function. But the conditional density function of y given x is the joint density function of x given y over fxx. We already found out fxx. So this is 2 e raised to x plus y over 2 e raised to minus x, 1 minus uh, e raised to minus x from here. So this is the density, this is the density function of fx. So I'll use this form because I can cancel out terms. Uh, so this gives this to be e raised to minus y over 1 minus e raised to minus x. And the limits on y are what is given there. y is less than x, but greater than 0. So this is the limits on y. So given x, y moves between 0 and x. Uh, so y moves between 0 and x. So we'll substitute this density function. So this is 0 to x, y, e raised to minus y, 1 minus e raised to minus x, dy. So I'll copy this here, e raised to minus y over So integration is with respect to y, so I'm going to pull out all the x terms outside. Integral y e raised to minus y dy 0 to x. So if you do this by parts, this is 1 over 1 minus e raised to minus x, just to complete it. So the integral of this is y e raised to minus y over minus 1, minus e raised to minus y over minus 1 dy. So here the limits are 0 to x. Here the limits are 0 to x. So minus minus becomes plus. And here top limit minus the bottom limit. Bottom limit is 0 because of this. So this is 1 minus e raised to minus x. So x e raised to minus x plus here e raised to minus y over minus 1, 0 to x. Uh, so if I substitute all this in the numerator, I have 1 minus this. So 1 minus e raised to minus x plus x e raised to minus x over 1 minus e raised to minus x. So this is the best estimator for y. And you can see this is, given x, this is highly nonlinear. It depends on the problem. Uh, so in this case, it happens to be a nonlinear estimator compared to uh, here, which is a linear estimator. So here, this is a linear function of data. In this specific problem, this actually happens to be a nonlinear function of uh, data.